good morning everyone so welcome to the lecture of vlsi design and today's uh, we discussing about the introduction to vlsi design module 1 I am Dr. Uday Kumar, Department of Electronics and Communication, SIRT, Bhopal. So, in today's topic, <clears throat> these are our content. First, we see the IC evaluation. So, we discuss about the history regarding the innovation of uh, transistor, MOSFET, and integrated circuit. Next is the device feature size. Here, we see how the <clears throat> technology or features is scaled down. to maximize the number of transistor in a single silicon wafer to increase the performance of the chip the third topic is third uh, point is trends in vlsi so here we uh, see the uh, vlsi design style uh, we have various option uh, full custom and semi custom so we see the comparison uh, chart also and next is jordan murray's prediction in this uh, uh, particular topic we see the uh, jordan murray's uh, uh, prediction regarding the semiconductor industry how they can grow in the future so and last we have few uh, images of the nano scale devices so let's start our topic so this is the very first picture of uh, bell lab Uh, we are uh, three scientists that is bardeen shockley and bardeen uh, invented the first bipolar junction transistor it was in 1947 and the second picture we see the first germanium bipolar transistor and it is roughly 50 years later so in 1957 our first commercial transistor developed at bell labs <clears throat> these are some milestone in electronics uh, field so we start with this 1874 where brown invents the solid state rectifier 196 de forest invent the triode vacuum tube from 7 to 27 first radio circuit developed from the diode and triode in 1947 bardeen and bruten at bell labs invent the bi bipolar transistor and this was the first time where the electronics and communication comes in the existence in 1952 the commercial bjt uh, is developed at texas instrument 1956 bardeen bertin and shockley received the nobel for uh, invention in uh, physics in 1958 integrated circuit developed by the uh, jack kelvin and noise and 1961 first commercial ic from the fairchild semiconductor so first a commercial ic uh, developed in 1961 uh, uh, under the fairchild semiconductor company that is the core company of vlsi and in 1971 intel introduced it its uh, first uh, Uh, processor uh, it was a 4 bit processor that is 4004 uh, processor in 1978 first commercial 1 kb memory chip is introduced was introduced in 1974 8080 microprocessor introduced and after this in every 2 to 3 year uh, the all the uh, ic scaling technology comes into the picture and uh, intel introduced uh, started from 4 bit to 32 bit and 64 bit microprocessor and, and today's we are uh, working with the core ic uh, core i3 i5 and i7 uh, processor it was 64 bit and uh, the scenario started from the 4 bit so in 2000 jack kilbey got the nobel prize for the invention of first integrated circuit these are some uh, evolution of electronic devices means uh, we see some vacuum tubes earlier it was uh, used to uh, amplification and switching point of view and it was very bulky in size and uh, <clears throat> it required large area to um, cap anywhere and here is some discrete transistor bjt uh, nmos bmos and some other transistor 
in this uh, bottom side there is a ssi and msi integrated circuit these are some ic's after the invention of cmos so these ic comes into the picture this ssi and msi we will discuss later these are the uh, scaling technology and in the current era we are uh, deal with the vlsi that is very very large scale of integrated surface mount circuit now next is device feature size this uh, particular graph taken from itrs international technology road map for semiconductor this shows the dynamic memory feature size uh, given in micrometer on the y axis on the x axis these are some years so year of evolution keeps going on from 1970 onwards so uh, this was the time when intel introduced its uh, first uh, microprocessor that is 4 bit microprocessor and the technology size was 10 micrometer so this graph in uh, here we see this 10 micrometer and uh, continuously it will it was uh, scaling down so in the current era we are in uh, nanometer uh, suppose we if we are talking about the current processor like core i3 i5 and i7 so uh, it was comes in 35 nanometer and 45 nanometer so the technology evolution is started from the micron scale uh, like uh, 10 micrometer feature size and currently we are using the 35 nanometer uh, technology uh, specific uh, chip for our desktop computer and if we are talking about the mobile phones so the size is uh, almost uh, 5 nanometer or 8 nanometer uh, so now we go with this trends in VLSI. So uh, the transistor, the what is the application of VLSI? Um, it is a smaller in size, faster in speed, and it re requires less power. Why it requires less power? Because VLSI is uh, used uh, complementary metal oxide semiconductor, and CMOS is. Uh, complementary in nature which is a series connection of two different devices like PMOS and NMOS and both are uh, simultaneously not working means once we connected uh, low voltage to the device then PMOS chip is on and once we connected high voltage then NMOS is on so at the same time <clears throat> there is no path from supply voltage to the ground that means if chip which is implemented by the CMOS, there is no current uh, will flow from supply voltage to the ground during the standby mode of the device. So the static power dissipation is almost zero. That's why it requires a less power. Means the power dissipation uh, for the CMOS implemented chip uh, require a less power or larger battery life for the portable device point of view and it is faster in speed uh, in some kind of uh, VLSI uh, processors like Intel invented uh, by CMOS based technology it was uh, invented in 1992 so uh, we heard about the Pentium processor so these are based on by CMOS by is for uh, transistor BJT transistor and CMOS is our unipolar devices so, um, this particular technology is faster as well as the power efficient. <clears throat> and size is smaller because the MOS technology is very compact as compared to the BJT. So, it occupies less area as compared to any BJT device. Next is uh, interconnect. So, it is less resistive, faster and longer uh, because... Uh, uh, current scenario we have millions of and billions of transistor on a single silicon wafer so we require a less resistive interconnect means uh, because the transmission time uh, must be in nanosecond so 
<clears throat> the interconnect is very important, which uh, require less time to transmit our signal from a transmitter to receiver section. And uh, third point is yield. So yield basically tells about the number of good die, die or we can say uh, chip. In a single silicon wafer, there is a multiple chip uh, implemented. In this multiple chip, this particular single chip, we say uh, die. So good die divided by the total die gives the yield. So smaller die size, higher yield. If we use a small size chip uh, implementation on a single silicon wafer, so we get the large number of chips. So die basically tells about the efficiency, how the designers efficient to get the good quality of die or chips. So this uh, graph particularly tells about the um, scaling in the semiconductor industry. So let's say if we are in 1999 uh, year, the chip size uh, was 180 nanometer. And when it keeps on scaling down from 1999 to 2014, so in current era, uh, for core i3 and i5, it was uh, 35 nanometer as we are al already told. And the logic transistors per centimeter square, it is 6.2 million in 1999, 18 million in 2002, 2005, it was 39 million and so on. And it was uh, 390 million. So we are uh, near about some billion transistor on a single silicon chip. The clock frequencies from, uh, started from 1.2 uh, mega, uh, 1250 megahertz to 16,900 megahertz. So it is almost in gigahertz. Chip size in 340 mm square to 900 mm square power supply 1.8 volt to 0.5 volt. So currently only 0.5 volt is required to start working with uh, a small size nano scale chips. And these are the performance basically it tells about the power dissipation from 90, 130, 160, 170 watt. So the power dissipation is keep on is increasing as we scale down our device. So this is the uh, latest uh, research area in under the VLSI field. Now we come to this uh, VLSI trends uh, given by the Jordan Smure. Jordan Smure is uh, predicted in 1965 about the growth of the semiconductor industry. He said that uh, for the growth, Semiconductor, uh, semiconductor industry, they should double the transistor density in every 18 to 24 months and they have uh, their the performance uh, will also double in the same time. So if as any industry which works under uh, semiconductor field follow the rule and they will definitely increase their performance as well as the growth of the chip. So history has uh, proven uh, Moore's uh, law, but uh, there is always an end. So we have some physical limitation and economical limitation for uh, to uh, continue with this Moore's law. So as we see our uh, portable devices, we have a, a clock frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. And it is almost uh, saturated uh, nearly in last uh, 10, uh, 2 to 3 decades. So in some cases, we restrict our uh, parameters. But in other cases, like in number of transistor, we definitely increases in 18 to 20 months. And these are the uh, VLSI, uh, these are the scaling trend in semiconductor industry. SSI is the small scale integration means when the chip having 10 to 100 number of transistor connected on a silicon wafer, it comes under the small scale integration technology. When it was 100 to 1000, it comes in medium scale integration. 
when it comes under 1000 to 10000 it comes under lsi that is large scale of integration and more than 10000 there is a new scaling technology known as vlsi very large scale of integration these are the glimpses of various technologies this is the pentium processor diagram these uh, colors shows the number of devices connected in this chip it was approximately 55 million transistor uh, now we uh, see various uh, photographs die photo in 2001 design projects the Thomas kind of project is this. Next is MOSIS tiny chip. Next one is the nano scale CMOS. A very famous quote by Bill Gates that 640k byte ought to be enough for anybody. Nano first uh, planner IC invented in 1961. This now this is the 300 nanometer uh, millimeter wafer this is the project of two in uh, 2000 wafer circa 1975 this is the nanoscale silicon mosfet geometry so in this case this is the silicon dioxide and silicon uh, region where we directly see this dashed area represents the insulator field in the between the gate and channel region so this this was sio2 and in blue color this is the silicon wafer so so this is the end of the topic and next time we will see the vlsi design flow uh, thank you.